for monitoring, we have another session, which is session two, in which we will talk about oxygen cylinder, oxygen flow, inspiratory flow, and gas fractions. And finally, we will talk about face mask, and we will have questions in our last slide. As I mentioned previously, when you come to the gray tables in which we have asked you a question, I would like you to stop the film at that stage and start thinking about the question. In that case, you can be interactive in your learning. In this session, which is session two from our series, we will talk about oxygen cylinder, then we will talk about oxygen flow, and inspiratory flow and gas fractions and finally you will find a slide questioning some questions that can help you learn more to start the session i would like to ask you that do you know how long an oxygen dependent patient can benefit from one oxygen cylinder and if you want to answer this question what data would you need to answer the above question to answer the previous question, you should know your oxygen supply and you should also know the demand. So, for oxygen supply, you should know that oxygen cylinders are in different sizes and oxygen cylinder type E, which you can see in the figure, has a height of 63 centimeters and a diameter of 11 centimeters. To start finding out how much oxygen do we have in a cylinder type E, we should know the volume of this cylinder. As you can see, to find the volume of a cylinder, you should find the volume of uh, the cylinder by multiplying height by the circular area of the base. I'm sure you have reached the number 5 or the figure 5 for the volume of the cylinder which is the liters that it contains uh, but the other question that I'm going to ask is how much oxygen do we have in a 5 liter container you may answer 5 liters but I should say that it is not 5 liters of oxygen in a 5 liter container it depends on the pressure that you have so, you should know the gas laws, which will be discussed in our next slides. As you can see, based on gas laws, if you have a container that has a pressure, a volume, and a temperature, then you change or move the gas from this container to another container which has a different pressure, the volume and temperature that you have in different spaces will have the equation that you can see. So the P1 is initial pressure of the gas, V1 is initial volume of the gas, and T1 is the initial temperature of the gas. And in the second container, you will have the second part of this equation. As you saw in the film, when you compress a gas, the volume will decrease and the pressure will go up. So, we know that the pressure in type E oxygen cylinder is about 1900 psi. We think again over this question that how much oxygen do we have in a 5 liter container? As you can see, in a 5 liter container with a pressure of 1900 psi, we will have about 650 liters of oxygen with a pressure of 14.6 psi, which is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Now I would like you to solve this question from a different method. 
Considering the empty weight of an oxygen e cylinder is to be 5.8 kilograms, what is the weight of a full oxygen e cylinder? To answer this question, you should know another part of gas laws which is called Avogadro's law. It says that each mole of an inert gas has a volume of 22.4 liters. As you can see, when you know that molecular weight of oxygen is 32 grams per mole, then each 32 grams per of oxygen will have a volume of 22.4. So, when you have the volume of 650 liters of oxygen, how much does it weigh? And then you will come to the figure of 930 grams. Till now, we have learned that oxygen capsule contains a condensed pressurized oxygen in a large volume but in little container. Now the other question and the other topic that we are going to discuss is the flow. What is the meaning of flow? As you can see, flow is the volume of fluid which is moved in a defined time or in a unit of time. For instance, in this figure, find out what is the flow of the fluid with two different units, liter per minute and little liter per hour. It is important to know that when we want to use the oxygen in a container, in a pressurized container, I mean in the cylinder, e-cylinder of oxygen, we should use a regulator. This regulator will decrease the pressure from 1900 to 50 psi. And after that, we should use a flow meter by which we can determine and adjust the flow of oxygen that we require. What will happen if we connect flow meter directly to the cylinder? You should know that a torque flow meter, which is a usual flow meter that we usually use in anesthesia and in our hospitals, uses constant pressure of 50 psi, so it should not be connected to 1900 psi of the capsule directly. It has a release valve when connected to higher pressure. And the other question is, what would be the pressure of oxygen at the open end of flow meter? We should note that when we are connecting the flow meter or opening the flow meter to the atmosphere, the atmosphere or relative pressure of atmosphere would be zero. But when we connect the end of flow meter to a closed space, such as a bag or a balloon, then the pressure in the balloon will rise up till the downstream pressure of the flow meter will become equal to the upstream pressure of the flow meter. Now we come to a very crucial question. Till now we received, we reviewed our oxygen supply. Now on, we want to discuss our oxygen demand. How much do you think is our usual inspiratory flow? It is a little difficult to answer. To answer the above question, you should have some data. For instance, the respiratory rate and the proportion of inspiration to expiration and the tidal volume of each breathing cycle. As you can see in this diagram, each breathing cycle consists of two parts, inspiration and expiration. The ratio between expiration to inspiration is 2 to 1. So, in each breathing cycle which lasts 6 seconds in a person breathing 
ten times per minute, the inspiration time would be two seconds, in which five hundred cc of air is moving from the air to the lung. So, the flow of this amount would be five hundred cc per two second, which is equal to fifteen liters per minute. Now we come to another crucial question, which is very difficult to answer. The material from which we usually breathe is air which contains 21% oxygen. What will happen if we add some pure oxygen to the mixture that we are breathing? To answer the above question, you should find the proportion of pure oxygen to the total amount of inspired material. For instance, Think that you are breathing from a mixture of 50% air and 50% 100 oxygen. Then you will have 7.5 liter per minute the flow of air and 7.5 milliliter per minute of oxygen flow. What will be the inspiratory oxygen fraction in this condition? As it is calculated here, you will have 50% of 21% oxygen plus 50% of 100% oxygen, which will result in 60% oxygen. So, what will be the inspiratory oxygen fraction if we provide 6 liter per minute of pure oxygen through a nasal cannula? As it is demonstrated here, then you will have 9 liters per minute of air and 6 liters per minute of oxygen, and overall you will have 9 over 15 of 21% oxygen and 6 over 15 of 100% oxygen, which will come to the result of 44% oxygen. I know it may be a bit difficult to understand, and I insist that you pause at any stage you think it is difficult to understand and focus on the items by yourself or ask it from your peers and colleagues. Now we come to a very important part of our discussion which is uh, applicable. As you can see in this table, you can see different methods by which we provide oxygen to our patients, for example, nasal cannula, face mask or face mask plus a reservoir. For each method, you can provide or you should adjust different flows of oxygen. For instance, for nasal cannula, we can use from 1 liter to 6 liters of oxygen. For face mask, we should start from 5 liters to 8 liters. And for face mask plus reservoir, we should start from 6 liters and we can go high up to 10 liters per minute. And for each liters of the flow, we will have different estimated fraction of inspiratory oxygen which is depicted on the right column of this table. For instance, with one liter flow rate of oxygen with a nasal cannula, we can provide an FiO2 of 24% and it can reach 95% with 10 liters of oxygen when we use face mask with a reservoir. And it can be very crucial for us because we can estimate the condition of the patient regarding the FiO2 that we are providing to the patient.